Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel has decided to co-sponsor a UN resolution condemning the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Russia knows that it continues to take into account Israel's security concerns in Syria, which it regards as legitimate. The United States asserts the fact that Russia has now invaded Ukraine should not give Iran the green light to develop a nuclear weapon. Jerusalem is closely following the situation in Ukraine and it maintains close consultations as it assesses the expected implications for Israel and the region. Speaking at the start of the weekly cabinet meeting, Prime Minister Naftali Bennett expressed hope that the Russia-Ukraine conflict would be quickly resolved and that it would not spiral out of control, which could have far-reaching humanitarian consequences. גם אצלנו, כמו בכל העולם, עוסקים באירועים הקשים באוקראינה. הממשלה תקבל היום עדכון על ההתפתחויות, ומאוחר יותר הערב אנחנו נקיים דיון קבינט, ואנחנו נדון בנושא באופן מקיף. ראשית, אני מבקש, בשם כל אזרחי ישראל, להביע תקווה שהסכסוך הזה ייפתר לפני שהמלחמה תתפתח עוד יותר, ויהיו השלכות הומניטריות קשות עוד הרבה ממה שאנחנו יכולים לדמיין. אנחנו מתפללים לשלומם של אזרחי אוקראינה ומקווים שתימנע שפיכות דמים נוספת. פרמייר בנט קונטיניוד בו אנאונסינג דאט אין דה נקס טו דייז אזרעלי הומניטריאן אקוויפמנט פור סיביליאנס וויל ארייב אין יוקריין וויל פרדר ריאטרייטינג היז קול און אזרעליז טו ליב יוקריין אז אקסטנסיב אפרטס בוי רפרזנטטיבס אוף דה אזרעלי פורן מיניסטרי אר און גואינג אנחנו מתנהלים באופן מדוד ואחראי. ביומיים הקרובים יגיע לאוקראינה מטוס ועליו 100 טון ציוד הומניטרי ישראלי לאזרחים שנמצאים גם באזורי הקרב ולאלה שמנסים לצאת. ערכות לטיהור מים, ציוד רפואי ותרופות וגם אוהלים, שמיכות, שקי שינה וציוד נוסף שיכול לסייע לאזרחים שנמצאים מחוץ לביתם במזג אוויר חורפי וקר. במקביל, משרד החוץ ועובדיו עושים לילות כימים על מנת לסייע לישראלים שנמצאים בגבול, באחד הגבולות שם, ורוצים לצאת משם הביתה. The Israeli Prime Minister went on to stress that in recent weeks, the Jewish state has prepared for the implications of the situation on the state of Israel, including diplomatically and economically, in addition to matters of absorption of Israelis that have yet to leave Ukraine, and Ukrainian Jews who seek to immigrate to Israel. בשבועות האחרונים נערכנו היטב לרגעים האלה, ולכן משרד החוץ, הסוכנות היהודית ואחרים מתפקדים היטב. גם מבחינת מלאי המזון והשלכות אפשריות על הכלכלה של ישראל, אנחנו ערוכים. אני שוב רוצה להביע תקווה בשם כולנו לחזרת השלום והשקט לאוקראינה. It is important to reiterate, as was repeatedly mentioned, Israeli representatives are currently present at a number of border crossings in western Ukraine to assist Israelis and Ukrainian Jews who seek to leave Ukraine and return home to Israel. And while long lines of cars are currently queued at all border crossings, with an average estimate of 20 to 24 hours of waiting time, Israeli ambassador to Hungary, Yaakov Hadas Handelsman, advises Israelis to use the local train from the city of Chop to Zachon, which crosses the border from Ukraine into Hungary. זה המעבר שהכי זמין לאנשים שרוצים לעבור, בייחוד אם משתמשים בתחנת הרכבת המקומית, כי יש רכבת שעובדת, שיוצאת מצ'וק לתוך הונגריה ואפשר לעלות עליה, עדיף מאשר לחכות 20 או 24 שעות אה, כאן. It is important to know that during last night's situation assessment in Jerusalem, Israel has decided to co-sponsor and vote in favor of a UN resolution, condemning the Russian invasion of Ukraine, 
which will be brought to a vote either today or tomorrow. Moreover, an interministerial team has been established to examine the effects and consequences of the sanctions against Russia on the Israeli economy and policy. And while Israeli Foreign Minister Yair Lapid asserted Jerusalem's intention to remain on the right side of history, it also must remain vigilant. According to Jerusalem's top diplomat, Israel's most important ally has been and will be the United States, but our American partners, Minister Lapid continued, also understand there are two points that we need to be mindful of and requires us to be careful. One point relates to the fact that only approximately 4,000 Israelis have managed to leave Ukraine to date, but there are still thousands of Israelis in Ukraine and around 180,000 Ukrainians who qualify to immigrate to Israel in accordance with the law of return. The second point relates to the fact that Israel effectively has a security border with Russia. Foreign Minister Lapid underscored, quote, Russia is the most significant military power in Syria, and our cooperation mechanism with them assists in our determined battle against Iranian entrenchment on our northern border. It is separately important to mention that during last night's security assessment in Jerusalem, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett initiated a phone conversation with Russian President Vladimir Putin, which lasted for about 20 minutes. During their conversation, Premier Bennett offered Israel's intermediary services in order to suspend hostilities. However, President Putin evidently declined, noting that a Russian delegation would negotiate with representatives of Kiev in the Belarusian city of Gomel. Separately, according to a subsequent statement released by the Russian embassy in Tel Aviv, Moscow continues to take into account Israel's security concerns in Syria, which it regards as legitimate. In its statement, the Russian mission in Israel noted that it continues to maintain close contact with its Israeli counterparts and highlighted that it does not want Syrian territory to be used for actions against Israel or anyone else. Therefore, military coordination on practical issues continues on a daily basis based on the deconfliction mechanism which Moscow says has proven to be useful and therefore will continue to work. Meanwhile, similar to Israel's necessity to continue coordinating with Russia to ensure freedom of operation against Iran's unrelenting efforts to entrench militarily in Syria, Washington continues to cooperate for its part with Moscow on Iran's nuclear file amid continued negotiations taking place in Vienna. Peter, I would say diplomacy uh, around the world requires us to engage with countries even where we have strong disagreements, strong opposition, strong condemnation. We have been very outspoken and taken actions against China's human rights abuses, but we have worked with them in other capacities. We are working Russia as a part of the P5 plus one as we're working and making progress on an Iran nuclear deal. There's no question that achievement of that would make the world safer. Uh, so it is our responsibility uh, and, uh, and diplomacy means engaging even with countries where you have strong disagreement and strong opposition. The comment by the White House press secretary was made after State Department spokesman Ned Price asserted for his part that Russia's invasion into Ukraine did not grant Iran a green light to develop nuclear weapons and that the diplomatic push in Vienna will endure. Of course, it remains in our interest to see to it that Iran is never able to acquire a nuclear weapon. Uh, the fact that Russia has now invaded Ukraine should not give Iran the green light to uh, develop a nuclear weapon, to weaponize, uh, to move towards uh, um, the uh, point at which it can quickly acquire a nuclear weapon. It remains as in our interest today uh, to deny Iran that ability than uh, it was on, on Saturday. It is important to know that while earlier last week, Price acknowledged significant progress was being made key issues remain unresolved. There has been significant progress uh, and we are uh, close uh, to a possible deal, but uh, at the same time, a number of very difficult issues uh, remain unresolved. Uh, what we know is that uh, there is very little time uh, remaining to reach a deal to resolve uh, these uh, remaining issues, uh, given the pace of Iran's nuclear advances. Uh, you've heard us say this before, but it remains true 
uh, that even as uh, we are narrowing uh, the set of issues we're discussing, uh, nothing is agreed until uh, everything is agreed. Two unresolved issues relate to Iranian demands to remove the Islamic Revolutionary Guards from the list of terror organizations, as well as its insistence to force the IAEA to abandon an open investigation related to nuclear materials that were found in undeclared locations in Iran, two issues which the Islamic Republic labeled as red lines that must be resolved before a deal can be finalized. ما تحت هیچ شرایطی در مذاکرات وین از خطوط قرمز جمهوری اسلامی ایران عبور نخواهیم کرد و پایبندی خودمون رو به این مسئله با قوت نشون خواهیم داد. در مجموعه مذاکرات وین تا اینجا خوشبین هستیم، امیدوار هستیم اندک موضوعات حساس، مهم و باقی مانده در مذاکرات با واقع بینی طرف غربی طی روزهای آینده به نتیجه برسه. Thank you for watching us as part of TV7 Israel's daily prayer initiative. I would like to encourage you to persist with prayers for the situation revolving Russia and Ukraine, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shavuot Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.